Lights go out, the race gets underway. And it is Joe Jessup who doesn't get the best of the starts there. It is the man from the outside of the front row, Matt Wilkins, the championship leader, that sweeps into the lead. That's Ooh. one or two cars going very wide over to the dust and dirt on the right-hand side of the circuit. I think Adam Parker might have been amongst those. Uh, and he has lost some ground at the beginning of this race as a result of that. He started the race in an excellent third position. It's Don de Graff, though, that's moved up into P3. Whoa. Oh, and the lead is very sideways. Matt Wilkins, can he hold on to it? Uh, well, no, he can't hold on to the lead. He is going to stay third. Joe Jessup gets past him. So, too, does Don de Graff. But Matt Wilkins is still there in third place. Gap back to fourth place. That looks like, is that Trafford King that's made it up into fourth position? I think it might be. He started to think in eighth place. Yes, it is in the number 42 car. Adam Park is still there in level pegging fifth with the number 11 of uh, Joe McMullen as well. But the three leaders turning their way around Rocket for the first time. Ursula Jordan, who's a bit further back down the order, she's getting well and truly stuck into this battle as well. And already her race has gone a little bit further than it did this morning. Well, save of the day, definitely from Don de Graff. That cold left rear tyre catching him out, but uh, he's not had the best of luck on the opening laps today. Has he got tangled up in someone else's accident earlier on today? And that time nearly had one of his own, but he is still there in third position. The rest of the field sorting themselves out then as they drop down through the course group for the first time. Jessup leads to Graff actually seconds. So I think it was down to third. He's the second ahead of Matt Wilkins then. Only it was Wilkins that was the one that had the uh, had the moment, not to Graff. Ah, beg your pardon. My mistake, my mistake. So that explains it then. Traffic King then in fourth, Joe McMullen fifth, and Joe Dalgano in sixth position with those leading three, I would say, just starting to creep away. Yeah, they certainly are from Trafford King in fourth place, but that's been a mighty first lap of the race from him. He is up from eighth position on the grid to P4, probably capitalising as others have their moments, including the likes of Adam Park, who has dropped back down to seventh place. So he's lost four positions on the opening lap. First three getting away then from King in fourth, Joe McMillan fifth, and it, it's Joe Dubgarno in number 93 in sixth position. And you've got DeGraff to the outside. That's opening the door for Matt Wilkins, possibly to get a place back on the inside. And now DeGraff is going to go all the way around the outside of Jessup here, up at Rocket Corner. No, he's not going to work. But is Jessup, is DeGraff going to leave the door open for his teammate there going into Peel? Yes, he does. So Matt Wilkins goes back through to second. Yep, so Wilkins capitalising on that situation. We've seen that a few times this weekend. It looks like one driver's about to pass up at Rocket and actually ends up uh, losing a position. In fact, I think one of the drivers that uh, Kieran interviewed on the pit uh, wall in that uh, 116 trophy race earlier on said much the same thing. Uh, the rest of the field then sliding their way down through the course through the leading three across the line. The new order, Jessup Wilkins to Graf, with Traffic King still there uh, in fourth position. Change for eight further back as well as uh, uh, Ben Siebold has managed to gain a position and uh, move up into eight spot at the expense that is of the number 74 Richard Lindsay. Here with the Motion Motorsport Geo then, Matt Wilkins and Don de Graff. It's Wilkins now ahead. It's uh, Joe Jessup, though, that they're tracing. Trafford King, the Sim Racing King, Sim Racing champion of the 750 Motor Club, is there in uh, fourth position. And McMillan still in fifth spot. Some side-by-side -side action I can see further back down the order from my window. We'll perhaps pick that up in a moment. It's about to come into view. Here it is. Adam Parker is involved. The other driver involved is number 95, Ben Sabold. And Sabold is up on three wheels, but he does get the place away. And just behind them is 74, Richard Lindsay and Ross Borman, 66 as well. So it's a very tight battle for 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th and 11th positions. Indeed so. The 74 car now uh, trying to buy into that as well. And then up the inside goes number 19. That's Musgrave challenging... Uh, Borman, that is, isn't it? Who ends up with two wheels out on the dirt, coming out of Peel Corner, stands his ground, tries to maintain the inside line into the court screw, but it won't quite work. And so Borman uh, does lose the place to Musgrave then. That was for a position inside the top 10, I do believe. Across the line go the leading group, Joe McMullen and Joe Dalgano there getting themselves together in a fight for fifth place. Then Seabold up into sixth, ahead of Parker, Lindsay and Oliver Musgrave to complete the top 10 as Joe Jessup at the front, Ian, sets a new fastest lap. Yeah, 119.585 comparing that to yesterday we're into the 120 so that is uh, a new fastest lap of the weekend it's not a new lap record though that's still with Adam Shepard from three years ago and he was into the mid 18s there so we're a little way off uh, off those times uh, this season so through Church Corner goes this battle with Ollie Musgrave now there in that number 19 car ahead of Ross Borman so that's 10th and 11th that they're battling over Lee Rickard the next car in that group here's the fight for fifth because Joe Dalgano has caught Joe McMullen 
Uh, so those together for fifth and sixth positions. And this battle coming through uh, a little bit further behind for around about 10th position, as say Ross Portman, who's a retirement from yesterday's race. There's uh, McMullen and, uh, and Dalgano going through. Adam Parker in the eighth place there. Uh, still ahead of Richard Lindsay in the eighth position. Dropping down towards as they come at the Corkscrew leading cars. Meanwhile, we're going across the line and that time through it was uh, Wilkins that took a little bit of time out of uh, Joe Jessup. The gap down to just over six tenths of a second. So we'll keep an eye on the lead battle as well as this battle for fifth place. All sort of academic, isn't it, really? When you're that close to another car, yes, you might <coughs> gain or lose a tenth from lap to lap, but really it's all about whether you can make the move. You're not going to get any closer, really, without making uh, at least an attempt at an overtake. Bit of a lock-up there from Oliver Musgrave going into the banking. He was the... Um, Sorry, Ross Borman, excuse me, the uh, number 66 car challenging Oliver Musgrave for 10th position as they went towards the banking that time. This is a great gaggle of cars, isn't it? Rounding uh, Church Corner, led by the number 92 of Adam Parker in 8th position. Then Richard Lindsay, Oliver Musgrave, Ross Borman and Lee Rickard are part of this now as well, very much so. Then about 1.7 seconds back to Tom McFarlane, who hasn't been on the grass yet in this race as far as I've seen. <laughs> Meanwhile, Borman on the attack again, peeking to the inside into Rocket, but uh, unable to find a way through. Eight and a half minutes of this race left to go. On board we go with uh, Ursula Jordan briefly there. She is running in uh, 16th place at the moment. Here we are. Good uh, view from her car. She's got Andrew Edwin, number seven, uh, ahead of her. She's only about eight tenths of a second behind Andrew. And Kai Lindsay and Tom McFarlane just uh, in turn ahead of Andrew there as they drop down towards the corkscrew once again. Ursula uh, in this family-built car, newly built for this season's campaign. She's going to come through and complete another lap. That'll be five laps in the book for her as we're watching the battle a bit further up the road. It's the battle that's headed by Adam Park still in eighth place. But you've got Parker, Lindsay, Musgrave, Ooh. Borman, Rickard all in one group together there, five of them. And Parker very wide over the grass there coming out of turn number one. There was a bit of touchy-feely stuff between um, Dalgano, sorry, between uh, Musgrave and Lindsay, I think it was, through the final corner. But Adam Parker, having had that little moment at target corner, he'll have dirt on his tyres, and that's just slowed him down through the next couple of corners as well, uh, which means that Richard Lindsay has maybe half an opportunity now to try and make a move, heading up the hill towards Rocket Corner, but he drops back slightly. Uh, through the right-hander at Church that time. Anyone going to jink to the inside? Well, sort of, but more to defend for each other, which opens the outside line now uh, for Ross Borman. But that doesn't really work either. These cars are all so evenly matched. It's difficult to get one over on the cars around you. And as it is, the positions then stay as they were. Regulations are indeed tightly controlled to try and keep the costs down, but also the competition as close as it possibly can be. And that's certainly been very much in evidence this weekend in the Type R Trophy. There's possibly a little bit more accident damage than we might normally like in this uh, in this category, but uh, but it, it certainly has been very close racing. Black and white driving stands flag going out to somebody. We know not who just at the moment, but I expect that's for track limits infringements. As watching Adam Park still desperately trying to hang on to take position from Richard Lindsay, Ollie Musgrave, Ross Borman and Lee Rickard. Great fight that they're having. He does run a bit wide, though, does Parker. He sweeps back through... Uh, to maintain the position though up into the banking behind these five there's then a gap back to Tom McFarlane in 13th Kyle Lindsay 14th Andrew Edwin 15th Ursula Jordan 16th and it is good to see Luke Emmons back out though after his heavy incident this morning yes it is indeed actually I hadn't spotted that but that car looked pretty badly damaged didn't it but the team have done a brilliant job of uh, getting the car fixed relatively short turnaround time as well to get that car ready so that's particularly impressive here we go again, this quintet of battling drivers, and perhaps this time it's Oliver Musgrave thinking about the move on Richard Lindsay, but he was just a touch too far back. For the first time, Adam Parker at the front of the queue, just out breaking himself, and this time maybe leaving an opportunity uh, for Lindsay. That doesn't work, but Lindsay is slow all of a sudden. Lindsay mm. is suddenly off the pace. Uh, I don't know if that was because of a touch or whether something just broke on the car coincidentally, but anyway, that stacked everybody up, and he appears to be out of the race. Yeah, and that's given Adam Parker some breathing space, hasn't it? Because there's now a gap back to Ollie Musgrave, who's now into ninth position as a result of all of that. Five and a half minutes of this race left to go. Leaders have just gone through to complete their seventh lap. Seven tenths of a second between Joe Jessup and Matt Wilkins. The two leaders in Don de Graff now a little bit further behind those two. Uh, two seconds behind Wilkins in third place. But here's Musgrave now uh, in ninth place with Borman in eighth place. Uh, no, he's ninth place. 
Borman in 10th, Rickard 11th, and Richard Lindsay having dropped to the back of the pack and stopped so indeed up, up on the side of the circuit at Rocket Corner. Here are the two leaders though, Joe Jessup and Matt Wilkins, and they have been sharing the wins all season long. Uh, this is the seventh round of the championship. They've got three wins apiece during the course of the season so far. Who is it going to be that leaves Anglesey with an advantage? There's double wave yellow flags there, of course, while Richard Lindsay's car is parked at the side of the circuit. So who is it going to be that, uh, that leaves Anglesey with the uh, bragging rights of most wins during the course of the season? As I say, in the points, it's Milkins fairly comfortably ahead by 27. So I think he probably is going to leave Anglesey leading the championship unless disaster strikes in the remaining four minutes. And might that factor into how he approaches this race then? Is it really worth taking a big risk just to get that extra victory over Joe Jessup when in points he's doing all right anyway? I'm sure the racer in him wants to try and stand on the top step of the podium again, but second place would be good points uh, for his championship campaign. So Jessup with the lead, Wilkins second. They've really dropped on the graph now, haven't they, in uh, third position. Don having a bit of a, a lonely run now to the bottom step of the podium. Then Trafford King likewise all on his own in fourth place really. Joe McMullen fifth, Joe Dalgano still sixth, Ben Seabold seventh. Seabold's caught those two uh, over recent laps. So that could be a battle worth watching as Joe Jessup has been given a five second time penalty for exceeding track limits. And that means that Matt Wilkins may not have to overtake him on the road in order to gain the race victory. So it was him that was getting the black and white driving standards flag a few moments ago then. We saw the five second penalty board being prepared in the pit lane. That is who it's gone out to then, the race leader Joe Jessup. And uh, that does change the complexion of the race. Confirmation of that now on the, uh, on the screen for those of you watching on the live stream. Meanwhile, Musgrave has got himself ahead of Adam Parker who might lose another place here to Ross Borman up at Rocket Corner. But he manages to hold on for the moment. Leaders coming across the line. The gap between Joe Jesper and Matt Wilkins, four tenths of a second it was. It's now five tenths of a second, but crucially, it's four and a half seconds to Wilkins' favour once you add the five second penalty to Joe Jessup. Two minutes and 45 seconds to go, so they are probably going to get three more laps out of this. Yeah, I think you're probably right around the uh, banking. There you go, there's Dalgano, still in sixth position. This is that battle that I was just referring to, though. Ben Siebold has reeled this, these two in. He was a couple of seconds back at one point, but uh, right there with them again now as they head through the banking at turn two, head towards Church once again. And Siebold flashing the lights, I think, there, wasn't he, at uh, the drivers ahead. I don't think Joe Dalgano is going to simply move out of the way, but nice try anyway. Seabold will have to do this the hard way, and that could begin with a good run up the hill and maybe a bit of a late-breaking manoeuvre into Rocket. It's been the scene of so much overtaking this weekend already. Is uh, Ben Seabold about to add another overtake to the list? Well, not on this occasion. Joe Dalgano keeps him at arm's length. Certainly does, and so this is the fight for 5th, uh, 6th and 7th. But Mullen, Dalgano and Ben Seabold here. Seabold has been uh, taking a little bit of time out of the cars ahead of him to, to get on to terms with them to make it a fight for fifth sixth and seventh places he was early on involved in the scrap with the likes of Adam Parker but uh, that was very much in the early stages of the race so this the fight for fifth McMullen who I think fifth in the championship as we said coming into uh, this race yeah just 13 points behind Ollie Musgrave who's a few places further back on the track so this is good news for his championship if he can stay there and uh, put a few point positions and therefore points between himself and uh, Ollie Musgrave in this race. Up towards the bank they come. The battle for fifth position. You could just see in the distance Don de Graff and Trafford King more or less together now through Church Corner as well for third and fourth position. So uh, that's been King doing personal best lap times to get on terms with de Graff, but probably a little bit too late because there's only probably one more lap to go at the end of this one. That being said, he was about seven tenths faster than de Graff on the previous lap and only 1.2 seconds back at the beginning of this lap. So it could be touch and go, but uh, yeah, Trafford King has been going well in the second half of this race. Turn two has Ben Seabold to catch Joe Dalgano, but can't find a way through yet, can he? Again, hunting around on the outside line, heading for Rocket, but not quite close enough to make the move. The leaders, though, dropping downhill uh, into the final couple of corners of what will be the penultimate lap of the race. There will be one more lap to go after this one. And Joe Jessup on course for a win on the road that, sadly, is not going to stand with that five-second penalty to be applied. Now, over the line they go. Last lap board is shown. Six tenths of a second the gap between them, but that now is pretty academic. Ooh. One board with uh, 
the who are we on board with here? It's the 66 car that we're on board with of Ross Borman, and he has got a car absolutely alongside him. Adam Parker. You can see that of Adam Parker. So this for ninth position. Is that going to result in a change? Yes, it has done. Ross Borman's going to come through out of the corkscrew and to complete another lap up to ninth place. Adam Parker now back to the rear end of the top ten with just behind him uh, Lee Rickard looking menacing. Yeah, so that was a good move there by Borman then. Ross Borman to move into ninth position. Adam Parker was at the front of this group, wasn't he, a, a couple of laps ago in eighth position. Yep. So it's really started to slip away from him slightly in the second half of the race. The leading two are up at Rocket, though, for the final time. And Matt Wilkins looks as though he is going to break that uh, deadlock in the wins uh, rankings anyway and uh, certainly put himself in an even better position in the points a bit wide there for joe mcmullen but joe dalgano although he gets alongside is presented only really with the outside line through rocket out it's not the best place to be in these dry conditions and so it should be joe mcmullen that stays in front yeah absolutely right so heading down to the final corner they come then and the checkered flag is about to be waved to joe just as uh, kai lindsay has a spin but joe jessup takes the checkered flag matt wilkins though is the one flashing his headlights because Perhaps he knows that it's a five-second penalty for Joe Jessup. So Matt Wilkins credited with the win by just under four seconds. Don de Graff takes third. Trafford King fourth. Here's the fight for fifth coming over the line now. Three of them together. Joe McMillan, Joe Dalgano and Ben Sabold finishing in that order. And then it's going to be Ollie Musgrave pretty much on his own now in eighth place. Ross Borman ninth and clinging on to the final place in the top ten. The man who was third earlier on, Adam Parker. Yeah, that race really uh, deteriorated, didn't it, for Adam as it went by. But he's had some starring moments. That drive in the race earlier on today in very difficult conditions was a particular highlight of his season so far, I'm sure. And uh, Adam will be satisfied, if nothing else, with a top ten finish here this afternoon. But Matt Wilkins picks up another race victory. And uh, we'll be very grateful for that, I think, given how his race started uh, with that close shave on the opening lap. But uh, he managed to pick his way through to claim the win on corrected times anyway, having been over a second adrift in the end of Joe Jessup on the road at the time of the chequered flag. Yeah, so one non-finish there, Richard uh, Lindsay, he retired up at the top of the second. It was late dramas with that spin for Kyle Lindsay, but he did uh, bring the car home over the line. Let's have a look at the results then at the end of 12 laps of racing. Number 86, Matt Wilkins it was that took the victory over Joe Jessup, although not on the road. 28, Joe Jessup in second with that penalty 3.967 seconds behind. Third to number 15, Don DeGraff. Fourth to number 42, Trafford King. Fifth to number 11, Joe McMullen. Sixth was 93, Joe Dalgano. And then uh, seventh was number 95, Ben Sabold. Then there's a gap of about 10 seconds back to number 19, Ollie Rosgrave, who was eighth. Number 66, Ross Borman took ninth. Adam Parker completed the top 10 ahead of Lee Rickard, Tom McFarlane, Ursula Jordan and Luke Emmons. With Andrew Idwin and Kai Lindsay, 15th and 16th. And Richard Lindsay, uh, a non-finisher at the end of that one. So just one more race to go here at Anglesey uh, this weekend. It's going to be for the KTEC Racing Clio Sport Championship. We've got the Type R Trophy cars heading in. We've got a range of... Uh, vehicles heading out to recover cars and just check it all as well before the start of that final race of the weekend. Uh, very shortly we'll no doubt be able to head down to Park Fermi to hear from our uh, race winner. No doubt uh, again we're going to have a disappointed uh, driver down there in the form of Joe Jessup who have received news of that five second penalty. We'll uh, see if we hear from him as well. But just one race to go here this afternoon that's the Clio's of this annual trip of the 750 Motor Club to the fantastic Anglesey circuit. Always made very welcome here. We always have great racing as well. Next 750 Motor Club after meeting, uh, after this by the way, is two weeks time at an equally attractive circuit, Cadwell Park in Lincolnshire. Another great uh, test of drivability, very technical circuit. So we look forward to uh, racing at Cadwell Park. That's not live streamed, but uh, do get along if you can to that one. But for now, we're going to head down to Park Ferme uh, and see who Kieran Mark has got to talk to. Thanks, guys. Yeah, what an amazing race from the Civics. They never fail to deliver, do they? And uh, we can see that Matt Wilkins and Donna Graff are just having a bit of a chat over there. But if we just uh, we can grab Matt for a second. Matt, uh, you had uh, a proper battle, but then obviously with the penalty, you just backed off, just maintain the gap. Yeah, there's no point making any silly moves. But uh, I was struggling to find somewhere to make a move. He had good pace in that race overdriving a little bit maybe <laughs> but um yeah we brought it home so that's good and yeah definitely too again it's a shame for joe he drove well. 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously, it's an improvement, obviously, on your race this morning as well. Um, giving you confidence in the next round? Yeah, it's looking good. Yeah, it's a good points haul, so. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, uh, congratulations on your win, and uh, what a way to end off the weekend. Very good. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Uh, so we'll just chat with uh, Don DeGraff. So, Don, um, obviously, a few seconds behind these guys. Um, what was it? Didn't it quite have the pace of them? Yeah, I mean, it felt good for the first few laps, and I was, you know, having a good battle with them. But then, from sort of lap four onwards, I just, I don't know if I cooked the front tyres or what I did, but the, I just couldn't hang on to those guys. And then even King was coming behind, putting a lot of pressure on me at the end. I just kept locking the fronts and just had a ton of understeer. So I'm not sure what that's all about. But no, good race, a bit of a gift there getting P2. I don't feel like I deserved it, but I'll take it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Just one thing, my nephew Grayson, one of my biggest supporters, is watching. So, all right, G. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, uh, yeah, great way to end off the weekend then with a special message there. For Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Right. So last race of the day, we've got one more and it's going to be a good one because it is the Clio's. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>